Hey everyone, Camille here from 88 Fitness Training. Welcome back. Today we're gonna go through some of the most popular chest exercises and how to use good form, what equipment you need, and some tips. So stay tuned, check it out. Thanks for sticking around. So this video was a special request from one of our subscribers, Keenan, and he had asked us to film some of the most popular exercises done at the gym showing the proper form. So today's video is going to be some of the most common chest exercises to get you those gains. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First up, we have barbell chest press. So if you guessed that this is one of the most popular exercises, you'd be right. You cannot have a chest day without hitting some barbell chest press. All right, so in terms of equipment needed, you need some type of power rack or most commercial gyms have a setup, it's all built into one, a flat bench with a barbell and a rack to hold it. So for this one, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lie flat. We wanna keep our feet flat on the floor and that's really important. So if you're really short or something like that, go ahead and toss some plates on the floor and place your feet on there. But having the feet flat on the floor really helps with stability. All right, so now we're gonna reach up and we're gonna grab our barbell and we're gonna lift it up. And now we're gonna bring it down. So in terms of bar path, you really wanna keep this bar in line with the nipple line, which is the midline of the chest. That ensures overall chest development. So straight up, straight down, make sure you get that nice deep stretch at the bottom. So just like this. And in terms of hand position, it's pretty important that you want a slightly wider than shoulder width grip. In fact, if you look at this bar, it actually has a marking on it of exactly where you should place the center of your palm. So go ahead, line those hands up. That way they're nice and wide, slightly wider than shoulder width. And then bring that bar straight down, get that deep stretch, and then back up just like this. All right, so the barbell chest press is a really great exercise for your pectoral muscles. It's gonna hit all over on the pecs. You're also gonna get a little bit of anterior delt, so front delt, and you're also gonna get tricep. So those are the three main muscles working, but it's absolutely a chest exercise. The prime muscle mover are those pectoral muscles right here. So fantastic exercise, load up the weight, just make sure you're using good form. In terms of common mistakes that people make, the number one mistake is bouncing that weight off their chest. Come on, y'all, you know by now, you have to maintain control, have good form, good time under tension. You definitely wanna focus on all three phases of the lift, right? The concentric part, the isometric squeeze, and then the lowering part. So you are strongest in the negative portion of the, the rep so definitely don't just unload that weight and let it bounce off your chest, right? Like we're here to make gains. The other thing is elbow position. So as you come back, you wanna make sure that your elbows are at about a 45 degree, right? So if you tuck them too far in, you're gonna get more triceps. So make sure they're flared out to a 45 degree position as you come down, right? So just like that. All right, y'all. So that is the barbell chest press. Next up, we have incline chest press. So pretty basic or similar setup. You need a bench, you need the bar, you need the rack. But for the incline, you wanna make sure your bench is raised up. So you really don't have to have a super steep incline. 30 to 45 degrees is great. So if the bench is flat like this, just coming up one level to 30 degree is perfect. Um, and so sometimes you can't control that if your incline bench is built into the rack itself. But if you can, I highly recommend just a slight incline, 30 to 45%. All right, so same thing. We're gonna keep our feet nice and flat on the floor. We're gonna lay back, grabbing the bar nice and wide, just like before. And now in terms of bar path, we actually wanna bring this bar down close to our clavicle. So that's a little different than before where we were midline of the chest. 
we're a little higher up. So incline chest press really targets the upper portion of the pectoral muscles. So we want to make sure that as we come down, we're stretching that area as well. And so by moving the bar closer to the collarbone, we're able to do that. We're able to target those upper portion of the pec. So same thing. We want a nice, good flare to the elbow, about 45 degrees. Come down, take your time, really control that descent just like that. All right, in terms of common mistakes on this one, you wanna make sure you have good posture, right? So one thing that I see people do is sometimes they hunch. As they come down, they're hunching that weight just like this. So stretch all that back, nice flat back on this one, and then make sure you're using that proper control of the bar during the entire range of motion. All right, y'all, so that's the incline chest press. Really great for that upper portion of the pecs. You also get some anterior delt and a little bit of tricep, just like the flat barbell bench, but primarily upper chest. So go ahead and get some. Next up, we have cable flies. So when it comes to chest day, you've only got presses and flies, y'all. So definitely make sure you're working cable flies into your routine. So for this, you're gonna need two cable towers set up like this. If we're trying to target midline of the pec or overall pec development, we wanna make sure that the handles are at chest height. So see how they're at chest height right here? They're not too high and they're not too low. All right, so we're gonna grab our two handles, take a couple steps out, push the weight forward. And now with a slight bend in the elbow, we're gonna open up, getting a nice deep stretch. Once our arms are in line with our back, we're gonna come back to the starting position and squeeze. So this is all about that stretch and that squeeze, y'all. Make sure you're keeping tension on those pecs as you come back, and then give it a good squeeze in the center, just like this. Now, a common mistake I see with this one is just not focusing on that contraction in the center, right? We really wanna contract, and then we also wanna make sure we have enough stretch. You don't wanna let your arms go too far back or unload. So did you hear that? That click, that meant I'm no longer under tension. So make sure you don't go that far back that you don't have tension. If you need to, just take another step out and then that won't happen. So just like that. Another mistake would be not having a bend in the elbow. Y'all, we only get one set of joints. Nobody wants to blow through a set of elbows or have elbow pain. So make sure you have that slight bend. I don't want to see any locked out elbows doing chest flies. So definitely don't make that common mistake. Now in terms of position, like I said, it's really important to make sure that these are at chest height because as you raise them up or as you raise them lower, they'll target different portions of the pet. So if your overall goal is overall chest development, make sure you're hitting that midline of the pec. All right, y'all, let's move on to the next exercise. The last exercise I'm gonna go through, another popular one, is just dumbbell chest flies. So if anyone's been at the gym at peak hours, it can be next to impossible to get on a set of cable towers, let alone two so you can do chest flies. So if that's the case, just grab your flat bench and a set of dumbbells and you're good to go. So this is very similar to the cable fly I was just showing you. Uh, we want to lay back, feet flat on the floor. In this case, we're going to start in the over the chest position. And that's really important, y'all, and I'll explain why uh, at the end. So from this position with a slight bend in the elbow, we're going to open up, coming down, getting deep stretch until we're in line with the body. And then we're going to close the arms back. So good stretch, come back up and squeeze. Now with this one, you really have to be in control of these weights the entire time. You really wanna focus on the mind-muscle connection, getting deep stretch, giving it a good squeeze in the center, and keeping those pecs actively engaged. Just like the other exercise, it's gonna work midline of the pec. So if you're looking for overall pec development, it's another really good one. I always feel these towards the outer portion of the pec when I'm in the stretch position and then towards the middle line when I'm right overhead. So another great exercise. All right, so one of the reasons why I mentioned starting over your body is if by chance you picked a weight that was just too heavy, you're able to recognize it 
and then throw those weights to protect your shoulder joints. What happens is if you have a really heavy weight and you start at the bottom stretch, you could injure your shoulders pretty rapidly. So again, always start overhead, start to open up. If at any point you notice, oh, this is gonna be too heavy, just let go of the dumbbells and protect your shoulders. All right, y'all. So with this one, again, slight bend in the elbow, just like the cable fly. Like we definitely don't want tweaked elbows or to blow out our joints. So always protect the joints. In fact, I recommend starting light and then working your way up to a heavier set. Now, in terms of dumbbell flies versus cables, both have pros. They don't really have cons, but the one thing I will say is on the cables, you have a little bit more versatility. So let's say you were like, hey, I really want to target just the upper portion of my pecs. Well, then you could drop those cable heads down low and pull low to high, which would emphasize the upper pec. And if conversely, you were like, I really want to work on lower pecs, you could raise those cables up high and fly high to low, which would target the lower portion of the pecs. So it's a little bit more versatility or adjustability depending on what you want to work. But again, with the dumbbell, sometimes this is better because when you're at the cables, because you're standing in this position, countering the weight, at a certain point, you're not gonna be able to stand upright and fly, it's too much weight. So lying flat on your back allows you a little more stability to fly heavier weights. But again, that's usually not too big of an uh, issue for people because chest flies are hard, y'all. You can definitely press a whole lot more weight than you can flies. But those are just some of the nuances between the flat uh, dumbbell flies versus the cables. So there you have it. I showed you a couple of the pressing motions, the flat barbell bench press, as well as the incline. And remember y'all, you don't need a super duper incline. Keep it to that 30 to 45% great or slope and you're good to go. And then two different cable fly variations. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Again, thanks Keenan for the request. We absolutely love getting requests, y'all. So if there's any topics or things you want to know more about, definitely drop me a comment and we'll film it for you. And then as always, you can check me and James out live, 12 Eastern, every Sunday. It's your opportunity to interact with us one-on-one -on -one and get all of your questions answered in real time. So thanks for tuning in. For more videos like this one, definitely check out our chess playlist and hit that like and subscribe. All right. See you next time. Camille, 88 Fitness Training.